Today I'm taking a look at the Miele Quieter 4C Fanless N100 Mini PC. This guy is passively cooled with an Intel N100 CPU and a nice tiny form factor. If that sounds good to you, then come along on this adventure. Some disclosures. Miele sent this PC to me for review. No money changed hands, they won't see the review until you do. Also, as of the writing of this video, this thing is currently on sale for $209. I mean, price has changed, but that's what I'm going on right now, 209 bucks. So everything is in relation to that price point. So anyway, come along. So I got the box and retail packaging. Let's check out what I got. Quieter 4C N100, 16 gigs, 512 gigs ROM. It notes here half of its eMMC and half of its SSD. So we'll see how that looks in Windows or Linux. Instructions, Johnny Jones. This is very tiny. I don't know if you can compare it with my hands for scale, but this is a very thin unit. So it says, warning, high loads can cause the surface to heat up. So it's passively cooled through the surface texture here. Um, there don't appear to be any ventilation holes in it, but I guess we'll take it apart and see. So I guess it's warning you that it could get hot. I'll have to check that. Please use original power adapter. Press F7, enter boot menu, press delete, enter BIOS. Interestingly, they put these on a sticker. I wonder if I can take the sticker off so it looks nicer. So front, we have Melee logo and power button. Moving on to the left side, we have two USB 3 and a USB 2. And on the other side, we have a Kensington lock only. Those are kind of special. I haven't seen those in a while. On the bottom side, we have two threaded mounting holes. So you could screw this into like a VESA mount. I guess I'll measure and see how far apart they are. And the back. So we have all kinds of stuff packed into this small package. Gigabit Ethernet, 12 volt, 2 amp over type C, 2 HDMI, a super speed USB-C with display port. That's a display port logo. So that's the third video out. Headphone out and micro SD. They've included some sort of wall mounting bracket. So there's a power adapter for the plug, screws for the bracket, and the AC adapter, which is type C output. Now it has a warning on it that says, please do not power any other devices with it. So I'm guessing that means this is not actually doing type C power delivery. So one of the dangers of using type C in this way is that there's a lot of voltages that are permissible by USB power delivery. And you're supposed to start with five volts and negotiate from there. I'm guessing this device needs 12 volts and won't work on five volts. I'm guessing this is just gonna pump out 12 volts all the time. So I should check that on a USB tester. So before I get too far along, I got this USB power tester. So we'll plug in and see what we get. It is in fact outputting 12 volts all the time. Please be careful with this power supply. Don't want you guys to damage any of your other electronics with it. So one last thing before I powered up, I got a power bank here and this power bank supports 12 volt, three amps via power delivery. Of course, you have to negotiate that via PD. So I'm gonna see if this actually supports PD or if it's just using the Type-C connector. Let's power up together. Well, we got uh, that. Looks like it's powered up. Power bank is telling me 9.5 watts, 9.6 watts, seems about right. Next, I'm gonna boot up a basic Linux system. This thing actually comes with Windows on it, but I booted it up, Windows wanted to do Windows updates as Windows does, and ain't nobody got time for that, so straight to Linux. Now normally, I would use Zubuntu off of my Rubik's Cube flash drive, but starting with Zubuntu 24, it's now too big for my two gig drives, so we have the Micro Center flash drive instead. I also need a keyboard to press the delete key to get in the BIOS, because I have a Mac. And in the BIOS, it looks very normal here. Alder Lake N100. This is super basic stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch into the USB drive. What the, oh, there we go, okay. There we go, so we're into Zubuntu. There we go, Intel N100 and Alder Lake N graphics. This of course shows the same thing, it's an N100. Well, it's PCI, I've got ethernet. This is a Realtek RTL 8111 series. The included SSD is this uh, Maxio technology NVMe. You can ignore all these, there's just part of the live system, but down here we have MMC block zero, 233 gigs, so that's the MMC storage. And then we also have NVMe ON1, also roughly 240 gigs. So this will be the NVMe drive. I also forgot the uh, CNVI Wi-Fi. So this is the Intel proprietary Wi-Fi chipset. So I've been running a basic stress test on Linux. It's pegging all the cores. Let's see what our power and thermals are like. Over here at the wall, we are at 12.6 watts, and it is remarkably consistent. Sensors tells me the cores have reached 70C, which is not bad at all. 
And in the real world, I can put my hand here and hold it on the CPU. It's certainly hot, but I mean, it's not burning me. So I guess the passive cooling is adequate. Also, I should mention, I ran the stress test for like 15 minutes before I actually put my hand on it. So it's not quite stabilized at 70C, but it's, it's not creeping out that much anymore. And now for some disassembly. Doesn't look too hard. There's four screws on the bottom. They're not covered up anything. Number zero. Let's try number zero. Okay, so now how do we pop this off? So this piece of metal folds over here. Oh no, it doesn't. Oh, we hit some thermal compound. I guess it makes sense, this is metal. So the screwdriver took care of that. We've got the NVMe drive here in its NVMe slot. We've got thermal compound on this heat spreader, which is cooling the back of the board. That's not actually the CPU itself. So if I give you guys a nice close up of the board, you can see what chips we're looking at here. There's BIOS battery. I'll take this out so we can get a better look. There's definitely a sticker under the thermal pad on top of the flash chips. So whoever's SSD this is, there we go. So here's the SSD we got, EGH 256 gig as we expected. So underneath that we have the Wi-Fi module. They've glued in the tiny little connectors, which is nice, they won't fall out. That's a soldered module, you're not replacing that. So all of these guys here are inductors for the VRMs. So the CPU itself is on the other side of the board though. So next I'm gonna to try to get the board out all the way. I'm gonna guess there's a lot of thermal compound on the other side, so we'll see how easy it is. I should note too that this unit isn't like sealed sealed. It's not vented obviously, so you won't get dust build up in here. But like this is not a waterproof enclosure if you're expecting that kind of environmental protection for like an industrial application. Okay, so what's gonna pop it out now? These guys are all tucked under their EMI shields. These guys are tucked under their EMI shields. I should go for this corner. That felt something. That's there we go. Now we're moving. The back insert is a separate piece. So I can pull that out. And oh, I'm stuck on the Wi-Fi cables, which I can't kick off because they're glued. But I can flip it over for you guys to give you guys a good view. So there's a big chunk of aluminum here. You can see where it's been milled down there for clearance for the micro SD slot. And it looks like it's taped over so it doesn't short. And then there's a section where there's no tape where they've put the thermal compound for the CPU. This is obviously the Intel CPU. So it looks like these two guys are our RAM chips. I'm not sure if that makes it a 32-bit bus. I'm guessing these are LPDDR5. So that's what we got on this side of the board. We've got the micro SD slot. The Ethernet card actually straddles the board. Ethernet connector, sorry. On um, the two Type C's here, two HDMI's, and audio. So it looks pretty good. Now we just got to get it back together to film the intro to this video. So anyway, this is the Mele Quieter 4C Intel N100 based passively cooled mini PC. Now what do I think? It is a passively cooled system. The heatsink is aluminum. It's cooled from both sides of the case. The whole case is metal and I'm pretty happy about that. I didn't have any thermal problems in my testing. So I mean, it's only an N100. It's like a six watt CPU. So you're not putting that much heat into the case, but it's able to dissipate all of it. As for I.O., you've got three display outputs, two HDMI and one Type-C display port. That's a great set if you're doing some really basic stuff, web browsing, media player, that kind of thing. So perfectly fine for that. It's got mounting holes in the back if you're going to mount on the back of your TV or display. And realistically, if you're buying this thing, it's probably going to get mounted somewhere and become an appliance, I'm going to guess. As of the recording of this video, it's currently a little bit over 200 bucks. I think it's 209 when I last checked, which I think is a very reasonable price for this. It's not expensive. It's not a high-end system, it's an Intel N100. N100s now are extremely ubiquitous in like small form factor or tiny computers. And for good reason, they're pretty small chips. They're great for many PCs. They're not powerful. If you wanna use this as a server, you're probably gonna to wanna to do stuff with containerization instead of virtualization. Of course, the N100 does support it, but again, the N100 is not a powerhouse. One last thing I forgot to mention, EMMC. So this thing does have 256 gig of EMMC on board, and this particular model came with a 256 gig NVMe. I would probably get the unit without NVMe included and buy a larger NVMe on my own and use the EMMC for the operating system. 
Now, I know there's going to be a lot of opinions and EMMC out there. It is slow, but it's also cheap for its capacity. So if you have any reason to have a separate operating system and data drive, I know a lot of operating systems now, especially virtualization focused ones, really want the operating system to be on its own drive, then the EMMC is a great place for that. If you're running as any sort of appliance, if you're doing a media center, for example, your media is not going to be on the EMMC drive, just the operating system is. And that's perfectly fine. That's what EMMC is for. So no, I don't think the EMMC is a problem. And I think in a machine of this price point, it's nice to have that storage available. So that's basically what I think. Hopefully you guys found this video useful. If you're looking at buying mini PCs, I have a Discord server link down below. If you guys want to chat with me about networking, Proxmox, virtualization, home lab stuff, all that good stuff. And I'll see you guys on the next adventure.